to send that out for you as well. And I look forward to a whole big evolutionary awareness with the with the webinar. I'm I'm seeing I'm seeing this, Barbara, as you are going to have a very powerful 2016 and 17. I just see you exploding all over the place. So I am looking forward to having you back on to talk, and I'll be contacting Sandy. <laughs> so let me know. <laughs> but this has been yeah. such a joy having you on. And again, audience, Barbara Marks Hubbard, her latest book, The Evolutionary Testament of Co-Creation, The Promise Will Be Kept, and her webinar that you can sign up to, evolutionary.academy slash register. And that's going to start on January 6, 2016, and it goes all the way through March 23rd. Barbara, God bless you, your insight, your wisdom, your incredible downloaded information of genius. I am just in awe by you. So thank you so much for being my guest today. <laughs> truly, thank you. truly. Thank you, thank you. Love you so much. Love you too. Thank I, you for do, everything and who you are. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, you are you're just you're just my favorite. I just love you. I've always loved you and and you you're just coming out. You're a spring chicken. Do you know how wonderful you look? You're 86 years old. You're an inspiration to me. And I have a little blue bone of vanity that you know, I look up to women who are older than me and look fabulous. So know that you not only inside externally, but outside you are just a light. So Wonderful. God bless you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, bye-bye. Thank bye-bye. you, Barbara. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye. Bye. Now, audience, we have another wonderful guest to give you his wisdom and love and insight. And we have Dr. Mitch Tischler, who wrote a wonderful, beautiful book. It's really, it's, it's where Barbara starts off with a, a tremendous amount of download, a lot of information. It really makes you feel, think, and realize and see things from a different perspective. Then I went into Mitch's book, and Mitch followed up with the heartfelt as Barbara left off with. So it was like a perfect combination of books and no doubt why I can't combine the two today. Uh, Mitch, Dr. Mitch Tischler wrote Me Finally, Navigating Life with an Open Heart. Then Dr. Mitch Tischler has been sharing Seeing with a Heart, a breakthrough journey for cultivating inner peace since 2000. He's an avid sailor, photographer, and musician, and you'll find Mitch embracing life along the shores of Cape Cod or following his deep passion, touching people's lives, traveling the world. What an awesome, awesome energy guy book. This is wonderful. Without further ado, Mitch Tischler, thank you so much for being my guest today. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, Lisa. It's such a blessing to be with you, to be with Barbara, and to be with each of you that are setting the space aside to be with us in this most potent conversation. It's, as you mentioned, just truly amazing to be in the presence of Barbara. She has such insight to share. She really does. I mean, she is, she's one of those powerful people and so engaging and so personable. I mean, it's just, she's always been a light of mine, and it is. It's kind of like awe-inspiring, you know, it's kind of like you're talking to the Dalai Lama. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's a little, a little, little, a little powerful, shall we say. Now, let's talk Mm -hmm. to you, Dr. Mitch Tischler. I loved your book, Me Finally. It was what what a wonderful book coming from a doctor and a man. I mean, it's like, it's such a heart-opening book. Every page you have everything from digging deep to inspiring with, po- with poems and, and poetry. What inspired this book? Let's start off with how were you inspired to write such a beautiful book? Well, what I'll say is um, I watched it emerge it was really in the space of the no-doing that all of this 
presented. So as you had mentioned, I've been sharing the Seeing with Heart journey since 2000. And how that all began occurring is at that time, and there's more to the story, and to simply be succinct at this point, I had a compelling feeling to pick a pen up in my other hand and get a blank piece of paper. And you spoke to the poetic writings in this book, and that's actually what occurred at that time. Poetic writings emerged, and each one contained potent medicine, potent messages. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting because my dominant handwriting is essentially illegible, typical doctor's writing. (laughs) And the words that flowed through my non-dominant hand were completely legible and complete. Right. Wow. Wow. That had to take you back a little bit. And it was so interesting because I hadn't had a feeling to do that previously. And what occurred was, as I would see a patient for whatever they had presented with, invariably because of the type of practice that we have, it's a very nourishing and nurturing space, our wellness center, because I do holistic medicine. Invariably, the patient would bring up something that was you know, troubling, and it would immediately occur to me that there was a writing in the collection that would precisely support their question. And so what I would do is I wow. would photocopy it and present it to them at the time of their next appointment. Wow. And That's it didn't interesting matter what the and question a different was. approach. Yeah, it just didn't matter what the question was. There was always a writing in the collection. And I'll actually pause for a moment and, and elaborate and say that three days into this experience of, of watching these writings emerge, I heard the name of the collection, and I laughed aloud because there were only a few writings. There wasn't a collection. The name of the collection was seen wow. hard. And then a number of months later, there was you know, 50 or 60 or, you know, writings. And so as, oh. pe- as patients ask questions, I just started to share with them um, these writings. And, and it turned out that, that individuals had small collections of these writings. And, and then ultimately, they just asked to, if we could sit down and talk about this in, in greater, at greater lengths. And, and that's actually how the Seeing with Heart journey that I've been doing with individuals and groups for the past 15 years emerged. Wow. That's incredible. That's an incredible story. And and the intuitive um, insight to pick up your less dominant hand to write this, it really, you know, it works on, on your creative right side of your intuitive feeling brain. And, and look at what's emerged. I mean, it comes from, you can tell in reading this, that this doesn't come from a cerebral part. Not that it doesn't have cerebral aspects in the book, just that it comes from a heart-channeled aspect. You can tell that the intelligence is emotional intelligence. It's emotional awareness. It's, it goes beyond the intellect. And that were, were, were the points that I was really, really drawn to because on this journey you discuss a lot about um, feelings emerging and um, how we can evolve through our feelings. So can we talk a little bit about that? Because I find that very powerful coming from a man specifically and even a doctor at that because feelings typically are women's business. You know, mm-hmm. Men have a hard time with it. So let's have, any, have your, your wisdom on that topic for, for, the, for the guys and the, and the ladies out there. So what I'd like to do is actually share with you one of the writings that speaks okay. decidedly to your, your question. And what's interesting is this writing emerged almost six months to the day after the writings began emerging, and it was clearly page one of the collection. The following words flow as feelings not thoughts, 
from the quiet place, the place where all is one. These words are not mine, yet they have the illusion of flowing through me. Instead, they are core truths that resonate from within each of us. If I felt they were mine, the possibility for receiving them would be not. To fully know these truths, we must step aside and authentically embrace the possibility of non-ownership. Only in this way are we open to all there is, which is only love, and only then will love flow over all in a way that one only dreams possible. Now is the time to embrace the possibility, the possibility of seeing with heart. That's beautiful. It it, it actually um, is a compliment to what Barbara was saying because it's a different way of viewing life. It's it's through a different lens. Um, what does that often feel like, or or look like, um, as we're moving through the transition? How did it how did it show up for you? Well, what happens is that our predominant way of seeing is through the visible spectrum. In fact, eighty percent of the information that we receive comes in through our eyes, and yet when we compare what the naked eye sees, let's say to the notes on a piano, it's as if the eye sees only the eight notes right in the middle of all of the notes on the piano. Mm -hmm. And since 80% of our information is received through that lens, the eight notes, what seeing with heart invites us to consider is that our perception of that which we call reality is only based on eight notes when, in fact, there's a lot more music. Barbara was speaking Mm -hmm. to that symphony. And that's Mm -hmm. what we're beginning to see. And it's not really a new way of seeing. It's actually our natural way of not only seeing, it's actually our natural way of being. It's emerging. It's emerging from within each of us. Great metaphor. I love your metaphor. That was great. Um, there's a there's a piece here where when we're going through change and we think we're opening up our heart, um, we approach a lot of things maybe through a different um, or more aware perspective, uh, more compassionate heart. We may um, have more tolerance we may be more patient, but we also go sometimes two or three steps forward and then one step backwards. And when we're breaking through old paradigms to recreate a more expansive love and those things start to show up, how can we, one, not beat ourselves up for maybe taking a step backwards and falling into an old pattern and to maybe stop ourselves from going into that old pattern. Do you have like an insight or a tool we could tap into and use to create that change in perspective or expansive love? That's a great question, Lisa. So the action of the step backwards is an opportunity for us to actually move with acceptance, acceptance of self. Mm -hmm. I'd like to share another, another writing and then, and then I I'd like to speak to that question a little bit more, but this is just what's coming into my awareness uh, at at the moment. Um, Okay. Because it's, 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 um, It's the core piece that seeing with heart invites us to consider. And when we use the word core, it's a very interesting word, C-O-R-E, the core piece. And the first writing that I read spoke to these writings being core truths that resonate from each of us. And 
when we take a